I am your lovely doctor, Ask Givis, and we are going to be exploring the question of words. So this show is called Words Mean Things. Yeah? Okay, let's get to the first one. Email from Mr. Fräulein Robert. I need to get into my email. One moment, please. Mm -hmm. That's one, yeah. Mm -hmm. And good. Well, your question is Where did the term rule of thumb come from? It's a very good question. It came back when the Third Reich was thinking about invading Poland. You see, back in that time, we were trying to decide how much of Poland would be left if we were to completely decimate it. So we decided we should completely take over all of Poland except for a little area the size of a thumb. So from then on it was called the rule of thumb. If we're going to invade a country, we invade it, must we destroy it except for a little area called the rule of what? what? But my producers are telling me that, that that is not yes and another um, another definition of it was um, what I'm about to read you hmm. Apparently, 17th century English judge Sir Francis Buller, who allegedly ruled it was a okay for a husband to beat his wife with a stick. Oh, I like that. Given that said stick was no wider than his thumb. This is the stuff that white trash dreams are made of? But also turns out it's not true at all, because it was actually about Poland. And that's the end of that. Thank you, that's been our show. Next time we're going to be talking about uh, Cut to the Chase. Have a good time. Heil Askovitz. Play some music. Stand! <laughs> My name is Dr. Askewitz, and we will be discussing what words mean today on the show called Words Mean Things. Yeah, very. Lots of fun today. Okay, so what we do is we take emails from you, the very, very nice viewers, and we find words, phrases, and idioms which all mean things. So let's go to our first one, shall we? Hmm. Go to check my email. Love this technology. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, good. This one is from Joseph Hiller. Joseph asks, where did the term catch 22 come from? Well, Joseph. Catch 22 came from the time we were invading Poland. Well, that was a wonderful time because back then we had a thing called the Catch-22, which was catch 22 countries at the same time. Well, this would be the perfect way to do it if you're going to invade Europe. Because there are so many countries in Europe, 
So we figured, let's catch 22. Why not? We're so powerful, catch 22. So that's how it came about. That's it. What? <laughs> the, wait. It. Apparently that is not where it comes from, according to my producer. Fine, could you send it to... Thank you. Ah, mm -hmm. yes. Catch-22 comes from... It comes from a book. book called Catch-22. <laughs> Once in this book, there's a lot of dialogue. And it has to do with paradoxes and all sorts of confusing things. Uh, in the book, it is explained to that. So now you will play all the characters, yeah? Really? I loved it. This is so much fun. Okay, here we go. So, Yossarian looked at him sorely and tried another approach. Is all crazy? He sure is, Doc Deneka said. Can you ground him? I sure can. Marge! Marge! You're, fa you're falling asleep. Marge! You're falling asleep at the camera again. Yeah, that's better, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Snap, snap! Where was I? Mm, yeah. Uh, then why doesn't he ask you to? Because he's crazy. Dr. Nasca said. He has to be crazy to keep flying combat missions after all the close calls he's had. Sure, I can ground the orb, but first he has to ask me to. So that's all he has to do to be grounded? That's all. Let me ask me. Wait, sorry. Let him ask me. And then you can ground him? Your Syrian asked. No, then I can ground him. My name is Dr. Arskevitz, and this is the show Words Mean Things. Today we'll be talking about words and phrases and even idioms and what they came from. Hmm? We usually take emails from you, our very, very, very good viewers, and we try to figure out what these words mean. Once you ask me, because I am the Dr. Arskevitz, so let's go and look at our first email, shall we? Okay, here we go. Mm. This one is from Peter. Peter asks, where does the term raining cats and dogs come from? It's a very good question, Peter. I believe it happened when we were invading Poland. We were walking into the line of fire. Uh, it was a, a difficult time for us as an army because we were walking and expected them not to have ammunition. But they started throwing kids and dogs at us. It was actually a very effective form of ammunition for them. As my cousin Rolf can attest to, he was walking into the line of fire that day. And a Rottweiler came all the way out of the sky and attacked his face. And ripped off all of the tendons right next to his teeth. And... Uh, it was very painful and traumatic for him, and ever since that day, he's always referred to it as raining cats and dogs, usually associated with wartime. So that's where the, the term ki What? Sorry, ha my producers are t telling me... Uh, apparently there's an alternate version. Uh, okay. Well, well let, let's find out what, what that one is, oh, because I'm pretty sure that mine is correct, but here we go. Ah, okay. In the 1500s, human beings had the pleasure of living in homes with 
thatched roofs, which, keep in mind, had the ability to repel winds no stronger than a burrito fart. Hmm. In these strange times, humans, for some reason, didn't want their pets pooping on their homes, so they were always kept inside. The animals would keep themselves warm in the little nooks in the thatching of the roofs, and their food would be up there also for a rainy day. So, when an especially rainy day did come along, the animals would either get washed off the roof, or they would come leaping down looking for cover. The story goes that the torn folks would look out the window, see pets falling from the sky, and proclaim it to be raining cats and dogs. And then they would probably go and burn a witch or something. So, that's what they think. I'm pretty sure that it was Poland. My name is Dr. Askewitz, and that's me. We will be talking today about words. Today's show is called Words Mean Things. Today we'll be taking emails from you, the viewer, and we'll be looking at phrases and words and uh, idioms and all sorts of other things, too, and find out what do they mean. Where did they come from? So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at your emails and find out what it is. So here's our first one. This one comes from Isabel. Isabel asks, where did the term wrong end of the shtick come from? Well, Isabel, when we were invading Poland, we were encountering something very interesting we had not thought or anticipated before that. We walked into it, and there was a very peculiar activity that we ran across. Let me read it to you. This is a note from one of the commanders. He said this. He says, as advanced as the sewage systems were, the Poles still had not arrived at the toilet paper stage. In the to public toilets, the poopers would rely, uh, would rely on a sponge or a cloth that was attached to a stick when, which rested within the bowl that contained a mixture of two parts salt water or three parts nightmares. After a person had finished discussing the day's events with their constituents, or while becoming a few points lighter, they would request the sponge stick to be passed along to them, and if they weren't concentrating on the task, they could end up grabbing the wrong end of the stick which they would have poop all over their hands. So, that is where it came from. Do you want to grab this end of the stick? Or the other end, which has all the poop is on it? And the poop is over like 50 guys! So, that's where it came from. Wrong ends of the stick, you don't want to touch it. Well, uh... Yeah, I think that's it. I think that producers are happy with this? Yeah? Yeah? Okay. Is it shaking the heads? Okay, well, there you go. Wrong end of the stick. That's where it came from when we were unveiling Poland. 